Hello everyone and welcome to the Sports Express Weekend Football Wrap-Up Show. I'm Rob Bennett here with Dan O'Hara. Got a special guest this week, Auburn Maroon Defensive Coordinator Matt Moskov. Coach, thanks for coming aboard. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Talking absolutely. some defense. Talking some yeah, defense, absolutely. From Pop Warner to the Dome, from 5Ks to marathons, from Little League to Work Leagues, Focusing on the community sports lifestyle in Central New York. Oh, do it. Do it, do it. Go on and do it. So another big week for West Side Section 3 teams in high school football action. Um, Auburn, big win, 41-7 to over Penfield. And in an absolute slugfest in Class C football, Skinny Atlas outlasted Canastota. What was the score of that one? 40 to 34. Um, Cato Meridian looking really tough this year. 2 and 0. Really stuck it to the Port Byron Union Springs team. Um, I got faith in Colin. Yeah, Colin, uh, Colin had a rough week, and uh, I think he's got Skinny Atlas coming in next weekend. So uh, I don't know if Colin's well, going to be they getting go much to Skinny sleep Atlas, this week. I believe. They do go to Skinny Atlas. That's yeah. right. Um, Marcellus improves to 2 and 0. Uh, big win over Cortland, 39-13. to So that's two wins for Marcellus, first Syracuse IT, and then Cortland starting to get into the meat and potatoes of their season going forward. Just to keep you up to speed in some other games, um, AA action, Fayetteville Manley has defeated CBA 40-16. to um, Zach Conley, quarterback, got the win in that one. Good for we'll, Zach. Uh, we'll follow up with some Conley information in a little bit. West Genesee, 28, Corcoran, 12. And uh, Section 4 team, Horseheads, um, defeated Baldwinsville 41-14. to Pretty big um, margin of victory in that one. Class A, ESM 30, JD 0. Central Square, Coach Kalfas' team is 2-0, 45, Nottingham 7. We talked about Auburn. Class B, Bishop Ludden 26, West Hill 6. Homer gets their first win of the season, beats IT 34-22, Salve 40, South Jefferson 14. And uh, again, in Class C, it looks like it's going to come down to Canastota. Looks like it's going to come down to Syracuse and probably Lowville. Lowville put another beating on General Brown after Canastota did last week, um, defeating them 44-14. to And uh, Onondaga in class, down in Class D. Got handled pretty easily by Frankfurt Schuyler, 39 to 12. So uh, that's the scores that we want to talk a little bit about. A lot of other great things happening in the area. Of course, the Syracuse Clemson game. Um, Tim Green you getting his number retired. Things. Well, you know there were a lot of good there were a lot of good things going on there. The game itself wasn't uh, all that exciting, but uh, Tim Green got his number retired at the dome. Had his family there. Very very touching scene. Um, a lot of people in attendance wearing uh, team green shirts. Um, that was very, very nice to see. On Thursday, you and I got to spend some time with uh, the Zunick Award winner, Dan Conley. You want to talk about time. that a little no, bit? That was a good time. I was uh, you know, honored that he asked uh, you know, me to be a part of the, the celebration. And, uh, uh, yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a good time. We're going to have that hopefully edited and get that out there, too. What is the Zunick Award that Dan was given? The Zunick Award is given to a Syracuse player who shows selfless acts. Um, you know, we'll, we'll have the whole video to explain it, but, uh, you know, the Zunicks gave up their seats on a plane. They, they were first class. They gave it to somebody else. The plane had issues, crashed. The people in their seats survived. They didn't. So, you know, it's about selfless acts, and, and Dan Connolly definitely is one of the most, you know, selfless people i i know he, he donates his time to everything if i call him up and say hey you want to do this dinner for this charity yep and he doesn't doesn't bat an eye yeah he's always looking to help people out he's great like that and a lot of stuff with kids which obviously is near and dear to our heart dan is always volunteering his time for high school teams semi-professional teams youth teams really gives a lot back to the community so the football club Hit the nail on the head with that one, given Dan his, his award. Yeah, one thing that stands out is, you know, he, he got, uh, you know, when he got uh, let go from Syracuse, he got other offers. He's good friends with that Ogeron. And, sure. You know, he got other offers, and he declined these offers to, you know, coach because of his kids. He oh, wanted sure. to, to coach his kids. And he was explaining to me how, you know, 
how many hours in a week you have to put in to coach D1 football. And, you know, he decided that, hey, I'm going to coach my own kids and try to get by, and yeah. he's done very well with it. Yeah, well, FM defeated CBA this weekend. Zach Conley uh, was passing two for four, 41 yards, playing quarterback, and uh, four rushes for 12 yards. So uh, seemed to be getting the job done in that one. Yeah, and oh, by the way, there's two more Conley boys behind him. You know, you got TJ. <laughs> They're lining up. And, and Nate. And Nate has total disregard for human safety syndrome. So <laughs> they always say the youngest one is the is the nut, so we'll see. Well, it sounds good. Um, yeah, that was a great event out there. Dan invited us to the uh, his tailgate at the One Group Talk Little Syracuse Clemson football with Nico Tamarian, and again, just a gracious host, took really good care of us, and um, just a great, great football weekend. But let's get to the meat and potatoes of the show and talk some Auburn Maroons football. Again, we've got defensive coordinator Matt Moskov here. And, Dan, I know you were out there, and uh, I'll just let you run with this. Well, first of all, I want to apologize to the Jordan Elbridge youth, youth team. We <laughs> went out there. I did some coverage on Sunday. They had games under the lights. There was an issue with the footage that I took, so we're going to get back out to Jordan and take care of that one. Yeah, um, yeah it was a great game, though. Uh, they got some athletes on that team. Fantastic and, program. They've had a fantastic program for a long time, and now they play on that state-of-the-art turf field and uh it's a it's a great show out there auburn Albert. kid on that team zayden tillman Woo! he's a big boy <laughs> is that why he's playing for jordan Elbers instead of uh the auburn indians <laughs> it is yeah. they put him at fullback and look out but uh no we'll get back out to jordan and, and we'll make some things happen but hey i got this is my first chance to cover auburn i know tommy did it last week and uh i, I had a lot of fun watching these guys yeah. play um I knew, I mean, we, we said in the earlier shows it was going to be exciting. It was absolutely, I loved it. I, I just, <laughs> there's some plays that we're going to take a look at that are, that they're the, I think they're the real deal. I think this the best team I've seen in a while. I mean, defensively, you must be pretty happy. Yeah, we're excited. We got some, we got some tremendous player, players out there, some really good athletes, uh, some tough kids, and uh, some smart football players, which uh, that's what you need. Yeah, they they seem to cover a lot of ground in a hurry. And I showed up at, in practice one, and a ton of kids, a lot of big kids, a lot of strong athletic kids, and uh, they definitely have, have carried it over into the season um, from that first practice through the scrimmage and now 2-0 and on the young season. So uh, what do you got? Yeah, let's take a look. Here comes Auburn. It's Pop Warner night. Got the cheerleaders, football players. Uh, welcome the athletes to the field. So Auburn wins the toss. They elect to defer. They kick off. So Penfield gets the ball. This is the first three plays of Penfield's offense. There's number 88, Colin Mahunik, or Connor Mahunik. Great play. Number 56 helping to mop that up. Here's Connor Mahunik again. Uh, reads the inside run really, really quickly. Another loss. Third down comes up. And then you've got uh, uh, Devontae Strachan. Literally untouched. Hello, quarterback. He's out, wakes up, gets the ball, Penfield punts. So Auburn's first possession, little pitch out to Robert Morris. Good block there. There goes Robert Morris. But guess what? It's called back because of that holding penalty that I don't really think was a penalty. But, uh, you know, Auburn punts the ball back to Penfield. They get it. Auburn's defense uh, stops them. Now it's fourth down for Penfield. Bad snap. And there it is. Good field position for Auburn. So, Troy Cherney. Hey, looking, looking right. Nothing there. Goes back left. <clears throat> it's Dante Herndon. Herndon with a little move. Gets up to the four. Looking pretty good. Four plays later. Troy Cherney lines up. Calls his own number here. And uh-oh, loses the football at the one-yard line. And Penfield takes over. But Penfield can't do anything with it, so Auburn gets the ball back. 7-19 to go into second. Nine-yard pass, Shahid Beal. Bad camera work by me. I'll take the heat. <laughs> and that's, uh, Auburn gets on the board, 6-0. Two-point conversion to guess who? Shahid Beal. So, Penfield gets the ball back. Quarterback drops back. He throws one up. Who's there? Devontae Herndon or Dante Herndon with the pick. Nobody sees him because he's small and agile. There he goes down the sideline, gets knocked out at the 20-yard line. A good return there. Four plays later. Troy Cherney. 
Oh, that's easy. Sneak up the middle. Another bad camera angle by me. Uh, scores again, 14-0. Third quarter, you may have heard of night moves. This is Beal moves. A little slow-mo action. 22 comes. Oh, snaps the left ankle. Goes back to the left. Oh, snaps the right ankle. Beal gets up field. Gets a couple yards. Same drive. Uh, here, Turney finds Beal for a 12-yard score. Two-point conversion is no good. 505 left in the third. 20 to nothing. Hey, here's some more Beal moves. You gotta love this one. This kid is an absolute joy to watch. Well, let's let him celebrate here. So here we go. Troy Turney gets a snap. Gives a little end around. Beal just plants his foot. Does a spin move up, oh, breaks number two's ankles, gets to the outside. Zach Gallbelly, good block on the edge, gets down the sideline. Number 10, he's flying, he's got him. Uh, yeah, he thought he had him, not today. And I don't know if uh, Beal got clipped here, but it uh, looks like he got a little tripped up there and lands down at the one yard line. And same drive, Davari AG. Well, hey, let's give it to number 30. We pretty much gave it to everybody else, and oh, he just walks in for the score. So, uh, you're looking at uh, two point conversion here. Troy just doesn't get any easier than this. Looks to his right, finds Owen spearing in for the two point conversion. 136, 136 left in the third, 28 0. Fourth quarter, Dante Herndon rips off a 27 yard touchdown run, and Auburn actually kicked the extra point. And they lead 35 to nothing. 11.03 left in the fourth. Last Auburn score. Davari Ag 26 yards out. Gets in the end zone. Final 41-7. And uh, Matt, I mean, the story was essentially the defense. I mean, wait a second. <laughs> You're saying, telling coach, the story was the defense. Every single highlight that you showed there was an offensive play. Listen. That's we're, okay, though. We're getting right. there. Okay. We're getting there. <laughs> no, sorry, Coach. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, that's quite all right. Yeah, he did. He does it, he does it all the time. He, he takes our thunder, and he just ruins it. So, you know, you look at the defense, and, and there's so many things that th these guys can do. There's so many athletes on the defensive side of the ball. I, I mean, you know, some guys will showcase. Some guys, you know, like J uh, James Grimes. Mm -hmm. The kid is everywhere, and, and you'll see in a lot of these clips that they just travel in packs, yeah. and uh, you coach, know, they, they coach, make things happen. Yeah, Coach, what do you think is the strength of your defense? I think the way they play together as a unit. We, we try to emphasize that during the week you know, with our pursuit drills, getting 11 people to the football, you know, and, and try to play tremendous team defense. Um, I think that's definitely the strength. You know, no one wants to be the superstar. They all know their role. And they all try to fill that role and, and then trust each other. Sure. Knowing that, you know, one day it might be, you know, Keishan doing the blitz and then Owen's got to drop back or vice versa. And that they, once they trust each other and they play off each other. So I think that's really the strength of the way they play as a unit. Yeah, only gave up 14 points to a very athletic Henninger team last week and then seven to Penfield this week. Seems like that uh, that defense has got it revved up. Yeah, I hope so. You know, they, like I said, uh, we, we try to bring pressure on, on opposing offenses, a lot of blitzes. Um, hope we can keep that going and, and again still that great pursuit and get 11 people to that football sure. makes it hard for anyone to run you know or get that ball downfield once you get that going okay let's take a look okay. hey we're going to showcase number 56 right here Keishan Cooper here he is makes a great play here very fast to the football good scrape by him him and Connor Mahuna clean that up here's uh Mr. Cooper again. This is how fast he is the ball. You actually lose sight of him. He comes all the way around. There he is again. Just literally grabs him and just rips him to the ground. See James Grimes, number 21, in on that one too. Here he is again. I call him the water boy. These are two of my favorite plays of the night. He just comes right through. Ah, yeah. Hey, give us a little celebration. Love it. Pointing. Here he is again. I love this. Actually creates a fumble. Penfield does recover the ball, but, you know, that's just athleticism. Here he is here again. Another play, him and Connor uh, Mahunik team up on this. Thought they were going to carry the kid to McDonald's. Um, but uh, just another great play, how they bring bring uh, pressure. Um, hey, you saw Connor Mahunik in the beginning of the, of the show. Here he is again. Shows the speed to the outside. Reads the blocks very well. Those where the ball's going. Doesn't have to really think twice. And, hey, Owen Spearing, we've talked a lot about him. Here he is. Um, just 
comes out of nowhere, strips the ball, force fumble. Great play by him. Here he is again. Uh, Coach Moskov said the kid benches like 400 pounds, and he just he's just incredibly strong. And that comes from his great work ethic. You know, we were listening to today after before practice, and he's just getting after it. And there's there's no uh, no stopping him. He's always giving you everything he's got. And I love this. Coach Moskov says, hey, man, you're on the goal line. I'll give you the center of the field. Just do a quarterback sneak, get some yards. Yeah, not today. We're just going to double A-gap blitz, and we're just going to pile drive you. So the defense can pretty much do everything. This is more of the same thing with, hey, let's give you the middle of the field. Let's see what you can do. Yeah, not today. Oh, no, this is the sack by Devontae Strachan. Yeah, that's my mistake. This other play will come up pretty soon. I think this is it. Where they said, yeah, oh, yeah, middle field's wide open. Take it, do a quarterback sneak. Nah, <laughs> not going to happen today. And, oh, by the way, if uh, Penfield does try a little trickeration, there's uh, number 16, Mr. Bailey, ready to clean that up. Very disciplined, stays in his spot. Great play, Owen Sparing over the top. So, you know, based on that, you want to change your opinion on, on defense? Yes, you did a great job covering the defense, <laughs> He did, he did. Yeah, Keisha Cooper, number 56, 12 tackles, a sack, a forced fumble. Uh, Connor Mahunick, six tackles. Owen Spearing, nine tackles, a forced fumble. You know, Omar Bailey, well, his name is Makai. Makai yeah. Bailey, uh, five tackles. James Grimes in the mix. I mean, they got they got a lot of guys that cover a lot of ground in a hurry, and they bring the wood. What year is Cooper this year? Senior. senior. Is he? Yeah, he's a senior. He's so, a heck of a wrestler also, and he plays with great intensity. Yeah. His motor never stops. Uh, he never comes off the field. Like, he starts on, on offense. He plays all the special teams. And watching him play is just a lot of fun because he's having so much fun out there. Yeah. He's high energy, high enthusiasm, always encouraging his teammates. He's, he's a, a lot of fun to watch. I had an opportunity to coach him as a sixth grader. He came over and played uh, youth football in Skinny Alice, just dominated, I think, the last game. He just took off, and that was the last we ever saw him. <laughs> but, but nice to see these highlights, and uh, great to see he's doing some fantastic th things for the Maroons this yeah. season. Yeah, so Auburn's got uh, Fulton this Friday in Fulton. Yep. What do you what do you expect from them? They've run a lot of uh, an option look, and they got a pretty good quarterback who does a great job reading the, uh, the defensive end. And what that defensive end does, and you know, whether uh, the defensive end jumps on the fullback, he'll, he'll pull it and take off. Um, vice versa, if the defensive end jumps on the quarterback, he gives us the fullback, who's a pretty tough runner. Um, so, you know, the option football, you got to play real assignment based. And uh, <clears throat> so they, they do a good job with it. They got some tough kids up in Fulton traditionally. And uh, But our game plan is going to be the same. We're still going to try to come after people. I think you got That's the right athletes change. to cover an RPO style system. Yeah. I mean, they get there fast. They get there in a hurry. They're big and physical. Yeah, our team speed helps. That, I mean, that that's a tremendous asset we have. Is, is you know, speed kills, as they say. And look you know, at some of the good defenses throughout the years, be it pro, college, or high school. Sure. They all have one thing in common: they're fast. So, James Grimes, I, I gotta say, I, I, I love this kid. Um, he seems to be like the silent killer. Yeah, in the defense. Yeah, he's it's, a he's a three year starter. He's, he's been starting since the sophomore year outside linebacker, and you know he calls, gets everyone lined up, calls the defense, and kind of knows everyone's responsibility, and and does a great job out there. He's kind of like the kid that you know he's out there and he makes plays, but he doesn't. You know, it's you know doesn't bring attention to himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go through the film and I see him in the mix, but it's not. You know, he's he's just filling like all the gaps that he needs to fill. So. I don't know. I mean, I think their front, the front four, their their three linebackers are pretty solid. Oh, by the way, you got Troy Cherney back there playing yep. safety. You've got Shahid Beal out on the field too. Uh, you know, Robert Morris, Shahid Beal, the human highlight film. <laughs> Beal moves. I love it. I love it. All right, so you've got Fulton next week. We just talked about that. Uh, what else do you want the community to know about this Auburn Maroons football team? They're you know working hard every single day. We have our our. Um away game then we start our league schedule with indian river coming to town that they're gonna be a, they're a tremendous program every year every year they yeah. do some great stuff they have a, a real tough offensive attack to defend you know really tricky something you can't really mimic in practice sure. so that's why film study and, and going over things on the board is vital um but no we're just going to keep going out there and, and working hard and playing hard and they really put it to i can't remember but they put it to some Double A school this week. Rome, they, they, yeah, yeah, they Rome Freight yeah, Academy, yeah. sixty three to fourteen yeah. or something like that. Because their their offensive attack is it's very it's it can be confusing and it's one of those things that you just can't 
unless you run it, you can't mimic it in practice. So your look team or whatever can't run it in practice, and the first time you see it is when you're going to be on the field, and they're just, you know, they got guys coming from everywhere, and they, they do a really good job of, up there with this system. Yeah. But like I said, we'll, we'll study the film and get those guys in there and, and just attack it the best we can. Well, right. One thing I got to add is that, you know, second game of the season, that wind in Holland Stadium <laughs> oh, was blowing so hard. And yet Troy just had the perfect touch on, on a bunch of his passes. There was a couple where he had Beal down the center of the field, overthrew him. I, you know, obviously when you went to the to the uh, north end of the end zone, yeah. it was blowing so hard. Yeah. I don't know, you probably hear it on, on, on the film, that he didn't miss him by much. So Troy's touch on, on the ball is is on the money. Yeah, Troy was 11 for 19 for 76 yards and uh, a, a touchdown. So that's pretty productive in, in that win that, that you were talking about. Yeah, yeah and he sees, seems to see things that happen in front of him, too. So, But, it, you know, it also helps when you got Shahid Beal out there and Owen yeah, Sparing sure. and, you know, guys that you can throw the ball to. And, oh, by the way, Dante Herndon, pretty good weapon as well. So, you know, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see uh, who's covering Fulton. Are we going to Fulton? I think we probably should. That should be a good football game. Yeah. They okay. probably got a good restaurant up in Fulton. Well, I'm sure they would love to have you up there. <laughs> <laughs> got to cover it. I'm excited. Yeah, got to see gotta, more people in the seats. We got to figure out the game of the week. We debuted the Backyard Sports Network. We uh, live streamed some of the action out at Skinny Atlas, Canastota versus Skinny Atlas this week. Um, got to get out and do another game and uh, redeem ourselves with that win that you were talking about. Film quality was tough. The audio quality no, was, film was quality tough. My film quality was awesome, except for the two that I, <laughs> the two that Other I than the operator error. Yeah, well, I don't know. So we should talk, and uh, maybe we'll go up to uh, maybe we'll go up to Fulton and live stream that game this weekend. Oh, we could live stream that. I wouldn't mind that. All right, do a little good. interviews after the game. Yeah, Hopefully, absolutely. Auburn comes away with that one. And I just got one question before we end the Auburn Maroons segment. Um, this running back, A.G., just looks like a big bruiser. Oh. In this game, 11 rushes for 63 yards. We saw some highlights of him last week. He looks like he is bringing it and it's tough to bring down. He is. The very A.G. is an awesome young man, uh, such a positive energy. And uh, it's one of those things, we have a lot of fast kids, a lot of great kids. And uh, Davari is a great change-up back because now you're, you're chasing Shahid Bill, you're chasing yeah. Robert, Dante Herndon, um, you know, Owen. And all of a sudden, you got this 250-pound back you're trying to tackle, and it, it's tough. Yeah. You know, you ask a guy to sit there and, and take a pound, and after a while, after chasing the fast guys, now you got the, the, the big guy coming up the middle. So he's definitely a nice change up, and uh, he really helped us secure the win against Henniger when we needed to, to, to yeah. wind that clock out, and we started feeding him the ball, and it took a toll on the Henniger defense, and hopefully does the same thing throughout the year. But he's a tremendous young man. Yeah, Davari, take, take care of that ball. Yeah, we running like this. no, right, right. Yeah. Saw, saw that on film. Was like, <laughs> a little oh, lightning and thunder going on. Yeah. With the Dave Moscow was going to address that one. I can <laughs> oh, tell you yeah, that. Absolutely. <laughs> so, all right. Well, coach, thanks for coming in, and uh, wish you the best of luck next week and the rest of the season. Hope you'll come in and talk some more Maroons football with us throughout the absolutely. course. Absolutely, appreciate your time. So you got, so you this. got Fulton. Then you're back home. Back home for the next two weeks against Indian River and Whitesboro. Ooh, back so, to back. yeah, back to back. Some uh, both tremendous programs. Great, great. Uh, Great history in both those programs. They yeah. do a great job every year. You have Carthage on the schedule. As yes, well? their last game of the year, and, and right now Carthage is um, they're doing really well. They yeah. gave uh, Utica Proctor a run for the money this past weekend, and yeah. and Utica is a tough team in Double A. And yeah, Carthage has got some uh, some serious weapons up there this year. All right. Well, your season seems like it's just getting started as well. Absolutely. Rumor has it, if we pack the stands for the next home game, they'll bring the fried dough back. <laughs> is that true well why on a friday <laughs> night would you not be at holland stadium hands down the best high school football stadium best high school football experience around i, I gotta Absolutely. say this i was over penfield went behind the stadium at halftime and and the coaches i was uh they were talking to the referees uh waiting for the halftime show to get over and the penfield coaches could not stop talking oh. about how beautiful Holland Stadium. It is a beautiful was. stadium. So, we we're very lucky. I think we've done about fifteen shows. I think fourteen out of fifteen, I've had a rant about how gorgeous that stadium and, is. And everybody, I mean, semi pro level, the, the yeah. new teams that we played this year, Monroe County, Lockport, they just sat there and went, "Oh my God, I would love to play here." And I was like, "Yeah, all right, well, we'll look Come it up. Come on over. Yeah. <laughs> we'll look it up." <laughs> all right, 
You got anything else, Dan? Uh, nothing. Can't wait for uh, Friday night. Oh, Should be a good very, one. Very exciting. All right, Coach. Thanks again, and we'll Thank talk you. to you soon. Absolutely appreciate awesome. it. Talk some more defense. Yeah, all right. It. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Defense wins championships. There you go. All right, fellas. That was awesome. Thank yeah. you. Right. High school game of the week had to have been out in Skinny Atlas. Class C powerhouse battle. Canastota and Skinny Did you Atlas. not see the Auburn footage I had? That was 41 to 7. That was a game that kind of went in one direction the way of the Auburn Maroons. I'm talking about full-fledged, flat-out football game. Did Makes you sense? not see the defensive highlights that I saw I had the defensive highlights. And now you're going to hear about some offense because there wasn't a heck of a lot of defense being played out in Skinny Alice. But uh, two evenly matched teams, Canastota, just big, tough, athletic. Um, Skinny Alice, kind of the same. By the way, I use the word trickeration. Trickeration. I got to give hats off to Chris Kudlow, offensive coordinator for Auburn. I stole that from what him. What about this multiple? Well, what? you know, we try to be multiple. Is that I stole like trickeration? trickeration from him. Okay. Not from Coach Pasqualoni. But... Moving on. Okay. Anyway, back to Skinny Atlas and Canastota. And to be honest with you, it was the Nick Womp show. Nick Womp versus Canastota and all the athletes those guys have. Um, football game, Skinny Alice gets the ball, goes down and scores. Canastota comes right back, scores the next two. Skinny Alice ties it up. Canastota scores again, probably a pivotal point in the game this week was um, at that point, there's about 32 seconds left in the half. Canastota's up. All they need to do is run out the clock and get it at the start of the second half. But no, they got a little, they got a little greedy there, and uh, they ended up paying for it. Drew Marshall rolls out, throws the ball right into Colin Cox's hand, um, and it was just uh, tough times. Skinny House comes right back to score, twenty to twenty at the end of the first half. They go back and forth, back and forth, score tied, thirty-four to thirty-four. When Cody Nesbitt takes an eleven-yard pass up the middle and scores. Um, Nick Womp, another just monster day. Um, 13 rushes, 104 yards, and a touchdown. Nine receptions, 85 yards, three touchdowns. Again, the big touchdown by Cody Nesbitt at the end of the game. And uh, the two defensive plays of the game, both by Colin Cox, saw an interception there. Also had a game winner at the end of the game that really iced it. 30. 40 to 34. Canastota's coming down. All they need to do is score and kick the extra point. Haven't stopped them. The uh, entire dynamic duo of their quarterback, Drew Marshall, and running back, Nick Weber. It seemed like uh, it was going to be tough for the Lakers. However, Colin Cox picks up the, off the pass, and, and the Lakers win. Going to show a little bit more of this action here. We talk about Nick Womp being a great receiver. He's just such an athlete. Give him the ball, runs the Wildcat. Store, score is just absolutely tough to stop. Here you see it on a different angle. Same play. Just takes the ball, runs right through the Canastota defense for a seven-yard touchdown. Here again, very, very similar play running the show. Direct snap, makes a fake, goes in the other direction. Just keeps on running in for a, another touchdown, two of his three rushing touchdowns on the day. This is the other angle of the same play. Just finds that crease and, and goes and gets it. Mike must be so proud. <laughs> he is. He's a proud papa. Here we go. This was another big play. James Musso, who experienced some difficulties for the first time in his young career, um, had an interception, had a fumble, but just steps up, makes a great pass to Womp there. Here, take another look at it. Uso, who just took a beating all day, steps up in the pocket beautifully, delivers a great pass out to Nick Womp in the corner for another Nick Womp skinny Atlas Laker touchdown. Nick Womp knew where the field was and where his feet were. I like it. <laughs> James Musso scrambling around again. Throws the ball to, guess who? Nick Womp. Very, very excited about the whole thing. You know, and that's kind of how the day went. Um, every time Skinny Alice needed a play on offense or defense, 
you know, Womp came and made it. You know, I don't want to sell the rest of the team short, but, um, you know, Nick Womp was definitely the man on that day. And, uh, big boy. Yeah, he's a, he's a big boy, but um, very, very impressed with, with Canastota. They are the real deal. They can throw. They can run. They've got a lot of athletes and just may see these two teams again for the Section 3 Class C playoffs. Lavo may have something to say about it as well. How tall is Nick? Good, I think Nick is listed at 6'2". 6'2". 6'2", 210. Nick, there's a picture of me smacking you with a bag. And I'm going to put, the, we're, we're going to show that on the film, yeah. on the show. So if I ever run into him, maybe he'll be nice to me. Yeah, mentioned Colin Cox on defense. Two big interceptions. Really uh, could not have won the game without those two big plays. James Falso, uh, defensive line. He played tough. Billy Richards on offense and defense as well. But uh, it was just a, a huge win. Talking to Coach Sindoni earlier in the season. And, you know, whole season is going to be tough. But he really knew that they were starting off with two really tough teams in the def defending sectional champion, Holland Patnett, and then Canastota. Um, some of you may remember, but Canastota was probably the toughest game that Skinny Alice had en route to the state championship in Class C two years ago. What's uh, what's Skinny Alice's roster size? Uh, there's about 30 kids on the roster. You know, There's a number of, of freshmen filling in there, all of whom are, are playing. A number of them got in that game. Big catch by freshman Grayson Brunel, um, Patty Hare. Freshman linebacker making some plays in that game. Um, Nico Decker, another another freshman. There's uh, some guys there who kind of are up. Maybe uh, a lot of them are, are helping, but uh, it's uh, it's a pretty good roster size for Skinny Atlas and the success of the football team. Just having more people come out. We've got uh, more than 30 kids on our modified team for the first time ever. And uh, the number is just continuing to to increase. I'd like to get out and cover one of the games, see it live. Well, it is a uh, it is some, a lot of fun. Stuff. Greatest show on turf? No, it it's not, but it's uh, it's pretty exciting. And only got one more year to see Nick Womp, one of the uh, best players to ever play in this area, one of the best players to ever play in. He's in a junior. State. No, he's a senior oh, this year. Senior. Yeah, he needs got about seven eight hundred more yards that he needs to uh, break the all time New York State receiving yards record. All right. All right. Um, had a chance to catch some youth football action out in Skinny Alice this weekend as well. The uh, B team with uh, Dallas Wilson, someone that you know very well. I heard he was smacking people. Yeah, he uh, he definitely brings it, but their team is 3-0 now. Uh, they defeated uh, that Tully Southern Hills team 36-6. to Tully got a little revenge in the C game, the third and fourth graders. Uh, Tully won that game 20 to nothing, but uh, those guys are rolling, showing off their brand new Speed Flex helmets out there, keeping the kids safe. And, uh, you know, interesting thing as well, even at the flag level, they've got like rugby helmets that they're putting those kids in now. You know, soft, cushiony, but uh, just kind of protect, protect the heads and make the game as football, make the game of football. As safe as they can. Yeah, I had a chance to go to Jordan Elbridge. Unfortunately, we had a little issue with all the video and we lost <laughs> it. But uh, uh, I covered the C team. Um, you know, some people I knew out there. I was a shock. Samantha Swartwood, she's running the cheerleaders out there. Um, she's a Wheat Sport grad. So, you know, I felt kind of at home there. But that, that you know, as a, as a fan, it was a great game to watch. Jordan was down uh, late in the game and, and came back to, to win it. They've got the... Uh, some some really good athletes on yeah. on that team, so I want to want to get down there and cover them and safe keep the video so it doesn't get lo lost. Well, let's do it, and that's a great segue. You know, people in this area, what we're trying to do here with Sports Express and the Backyard Sports Network is really for you. You know, if you have a great story, you want us to cover your event, reach out to us, and uh, you know, send us your pictures, send us your video clips, send us your content. And we'll get it out there. If not on the TV show, we'll get it out on our website through our social media. But uh, we are the voice of the Community Sport Net Network, and we rely upon you to uh, let us know about all the great things going on in your backyard. Big weekend coming up, too, so be a lot of good games to go watch. Let's do it. Colin Dillbaugh better do some homework this week. Heading. I love that kid. <laughs> he is... Uh... He is a very special. I think we should head out to uh, Fulton, the Fulton-Auburn game. 
Yeah. Yeah? We'll talk. All right. We but need some more people to help us cover more stuff. We do. We need uh, we need some contacts for Cato Meridian. We'd love to get out and, and cover that very talented football team that's yeah, gone Yeah, I wish we had film on that. I'd like to see what they've got and what they can bring to the table. So, you know, um, even, even if the high schools say, hey, here's our game film, we're not yeah. going to, you know, exploit them or show it off. We just want to show highlights, man. Give these kids some love. Definitely. And uh, we'll head out. We'll do interviews. We'll cover it the way you want it covered. So uh, we're the voice of the community sport lifestyle. We are Sports Express, broadcasting games on the Backyard Sports Network. Thanks. We'll talk to you next week.